In the previous videos, we saw three different ways to derive the Shannon entropy. In all three, we assumed the distribution was over discrete values. In this video, we'll see how it works for continuous values, which is another source of confusion. The simple approach is to say, we have minus sum of p log p for discrete distributions, we simply substitute with the sum with the integral, and we're done. And unfortunately, this doesn't work. The expression minus the integral of rho log rho is significantly different, with particular issues that we need to understand specifically. In fact, imagine a uniform distribution between 0 and 1. It covers infinitely many cases, so intuitively we have infinite variability. In fact, h equal log n, the number of cases, but n goes to infinity, and log of infinity goes to infinity. We would need infinitely many questions to identify a real number, and we'd have infinitely many permutations. So the intuition we built in the discrete case does not carry over exactly. So let's see how exactly one does the limit and derives the continuous expression. Let's start with a distribution rho of x. Note that rho does not give us a fraction or a probability, it gives us a density. So we divide the range in intervals of size 1 over n, where n is the number of intervals in a unit of x. We integrate within each interval i and get an associated pi. The sum of all pi's will be 1. We also get an average rho i by dividing each pi by delta x. By construction, the average rho i will tend to r as n goes to infinity. So the sum of any function f of the average rho i will tend to the integral of f of rho. Now let's prepare minus p log p for the limit. pi is the average of rho i times delta x, which is 1 over n. Log of the product is the sum of the log, and for the first term we expand pi in terms of average rho i and delta x. In the second term, the sum of pi is equal to 1. So the first term is a function of average rho and delta x only, while the second term is a function of n only. We now take the limit, which is the limit of both terms separately. The first part, using the property we saw before, becomes the integral minus rho log rho. The second part instead diverges. Note that the part that makes the entropy go to infinity does not depend on the distribution, only on the fact that we keep increasing the number of bins, and we are going to take advantage of that fact. Suppose we take the limit of the difference of the entropy of two distributions. This will be the difference of the limits. The divergent part is the same, so it cancels out. Technically, we are taking the difference before the limit, cancel it there, and then we take the limit. But the point is that the difference of entropy is the difference between the integral minus rho log rho and minus rho hat log rho hat. Now we choose rho hat to be a uniform distribution over one unit, for example, between 0 and 1. If you calculate the integral, you see that it's 0. So the integral of minus rho log rho is not the variability of the distribution in absolute, but the difference in variability from a uniform distribution over a unit interval. To sum up, the integral of minus rho log rho is the variability of the elements within a distribution compared to a unit distribution. It's the number of questions needed to identify an element up to a unit. The log of number of permutation of large sequence at the precision set by the unit. This has two major consequences. One is that this value can be negative, and two, that it is unit dependent, and both are very important to understand. To see that it can be negative, consider a uniform distribution between two values a and b. If you calculate the entropy, you get log b minus a. If you have a unit interval, then b minus a is 1, so h is 0. The variability is the same as the one of a unit interval. Zero bits of information are needed. If you have double the unit interval, and we assume log is in base 2, you have entropy of 1. The variability is greater and you need one bit of information, one question, to narrow it down to a unit. For example, is it greater than a plus b over 2, the average value? But if you have half a unit interval, the variability is lower than a unit. Entropy is minus 1. To identify an element up to a unit, you have to forget one bit of information. To see that it is unit dependent, let's change units from x to y of x. Rho is a density, so you get a Jacobian when you change units, so that the integral remains the same. If we get the expression for the Shannon entropy, we get two Jacobians, one outside the log and one in the log. The one outside the log combines with dx and becomes dy. The one inside the log becomes an extra term. 
So the entropy in the old unit is the entropy in the new unit minus the average of the log of the Jacobian. Note that this number will be different for each distribution, so it's kind of a mess. What does this mean physically? A unit change will change the bin size, so it changes the unit distribution we use for comparison. Also, a uniform binning in X does not correspond to a uniform binning in Y, which makes things very complicated. What we can do is change the definition that we had before. Instead of simply using the bin size as 1 over n, we add this m of x term, which represents the bin density we're going to use. If we redo the limit, we have hm is the integral of minus rho log rho over m. Rho is the probability per unit, m is bins per unit, so we have probability per bin, which is a pure number. And this makes sense. If you change units, you get three Jacobians, one inside the log and two inside the log, one for each density. But these simplify, so hm now has the same value over x and y. The m keeps track of the change in binning. This makes sense because now we're using the same binning identified by m in both cases. The Shannon entropy, then, is a special case where we implicitly have a bin density of 1. Uniform bins over x and a unit of x is our comparison. The more general expression forces you to specify the binning through m and is coordinate invariant. So we fix the problem. We have a coordinate invariant expression for entropy. Actually, no, we haven't fixed coordinate invariance. We are just hiding it or making it explicit, depending on the way you look at it. The idea of coordinated independence in physics is that the fundamental objects and laws should be independent of the way we choose to describe them. Here, the value depends on the bin density m of x, so it's not at all independent on the way we choose to describe it. This is not a problem for information theory, by the way, and it may not be a problem for other branches of science as well, but it is a problem in physics and we need to address it head on. The expression minus rho log rho over m is known as KL divergence. It is usually described as quantifying how different two probability distribution rho and m are, and in many cases that's how it's used, but this does not work in general. Note that for the expression to work, m must be non-zero everywhere, and not all probability distributions are non-zero everywhere. Uniform distributions over an infinite range, for example, must be zero somewhere. This means that, for example, you cannot define the KL divergence on the space of all probability distributions. So you will have problems using the KL divergence as a fundamental expression because it forces you to throw out some cases. The other issue is that M does not have to integrate to 1, and probability distributions must do so. A more general characterization of the KL divergence is the variability of the distribution rho according to the bin density defined by M. You may, of course, decide to use a probability distribution as a bin density, and that will indeed tell you something about the relationship between two distributions. But this is a subcase, a special case. And again, we want an understanding that works in all cases, and then understand how it works for the subcase. If we tried to use the understanding only applicable to the subcase, to the whole, then we would just get confused. To recap, the continuous version of the Shannon entropy characterizes the variability of the elements within a distribution up to a unit of x. It can be negative, because the variability can be lower than the unit, and it is not coordinate independent, depends on the choice of unit. We can make the value coordinate invariant by making the choice of bin density explicit using the Kyle divergence, but this is not truly coordinate independent, because the only thing we did was to make explicit the choice of binning, which is an arbitrary choice that, in the end, corresponds to a choice of unit. And this last part plays an important role in physics.